Please note, the following video contains images that some viewers may find disturbing. Disinformation. His KGB training now complete, Kalugin soon made his first big catch, recruiting a Theokol rocket scientist in New York City. That surge of momentum carried him through almost a decade of adventures, common to spies around the world, such as recruiting operatives, dealing with honey traps, collecting intelligence, and keeping a finger on the pulse of the Soviet Union's biggest adversary, the United States. During these years, the Berlin Wall was built. U.S. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And Nikita Khrushchev, Kalugin's hope for a new Russia, would be removed from power and replaced by future leader Leonid Brezhnev in 1964. But in 1968, a movement in the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic gave Kalugin hope. First Secretary Alexander Dubček was opening up his country, transferring more power to the people of Czechoslovakia. Kalugin, now the deputy station chief at the KGB headquarters in Washington, D.C., followed the events closely secretly hopeful that the gentle democratization of the Prague Spring would spread through Eastern Europe and eventually reach the Soviet Union itself. His hopes were dashed on August 20th, 1968. He received a top-secret cable from Moscow, stating that Counter-revolutionary activity in Prague, supported by American and NATO secret services, has forced the USSR and fraternal countries of Eastern Europe to take decisive steps to defend the achievements of socialism in Czechoslovakia. On August 21st, Warsaw Pact troops and thousands of tanks entered Czechoslovakia. Over 300 Czech and Slovak citizens were injured or killed during the invasion. In the following months, almost 300,000 people would flee the country. Pravda and other Soviet media reported that Warsaw Pact troops had found CIA arms caches, and thousands of NATO troops, disguised as tourists, had flooded into Prague. I knew it was all nonsense. Kalugin met with his Czechoslovakian counterpart a few days later. No sooner had I sat down than the Czech resident, tears welling in his eyes, launched into an attack on the Kremlin. Your leadership has committed a crass error in using force against a nation which has always respected the Soviet Union. I cannot accept any justification for it. My children will hate you for what you've done to my country. In the days that followed the invasion, I sat in my office in the embassy and poured over hundreds of pages of purloined U.S. intelligence reports on Czechoslovakia. Not one of them gave a hint that the CIA or other U.S. agencies had done anything nefarious. Though disturbed by the events, Kalugin was not yet disillusioned with his country. I was a product of the system, a patriot, and defection was absolutely out of the question. Kalugin also describes himself as a slave to his ambitions. And at that time, his career was unstoppable. Disinformation, Russian Federation. As with the invasion of Prague in 1968, Russian Federation officials continuously insist that NATO is responsible for Russia's war in Ukraine. Disinformation will be defined here as the intentional use of false or inaccurate information or information that includes selective truths and half-truths. The Russian Federation has made full play of it at home and around the world. According to the RAND Corporation's article, The Russian Firehose of Falsehood Propaganda Model, Russian propaganda has the following qualities. It is high volume and multi-channel, rapid, Volume continuous, and repetitive, if we were to conduct a thermonuclear and that it makes no commitment to consistency or objective reality. The Russian government and media are saturated with disinformation. Now, the departure from reality is spreading in Russia's education system as well. A forlorn echo from Soviet times can be found in the 11th grade history textbooks issued in 2023. While there is extensive material justifying Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it barely mentions Joseph Stalin's atrocities and returns to the Soviet depiction of Stalin as a heroic protector of his country. Though it mentions post-World War II repressions, it provides no information on the number of victims and almost no mention of the Gulag system in which over 18 million Soviets were incarcerated during Stalin's leadership. As in Soviet times, versions of events that don't align with the party line must be silenced. The Memorial Society was founded during the dissolution of the Soviet Union to research and remember victims of Stalin's regime. 
In the following decades, they expanded to include over 50 organizations inside and outside Russia. Members have risked persecution, imprisonment, and death to uncover the truth about human rights abuses. In November 2021, the Moscow City Court would levy diverse accusations against Memorial. In addition to accusing Memorial of violating the foreign agent law and endorsing extremism, prosecutors would claim that the organization formed a negative perception of the judicial system of the Russian Federation. In December 2021, Judge Mikhail Kazakov dissolved the Memorial Human Rights Center and shuttered their Moscow headquarters. In January 2023, Judge Kazakov would go on to dissolve one of Russia's oldest human rights organizations, the Moscow Helsinki Group. It's not the first time Russian leaders have used the legal system as a weapon to silence their citizens.